Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be comparing and contrasting primary data and secondary data. So primary data is data that we have collected or created ourselves. So it could be from a survey or interview or focus group or some other way that we have gone about collecting our own data. So primary data is really good because it is going to match our research questions. We have designed our own survey, we know what we want to find out, so it's going to be perfectly tailored to what we want to know. The downside is that to do this costs money, takes time, takes effort, you need people to administer the surveys or do the interviews, you need to figure out how to collect your sample, you need to figure out how to uh, what the best way of collecting the data is and particularly if you need the information really quickly this could be very difficult for you to be able to do. On the other hand secondary data is data that someone else has already collected and they've collected it for some purpose other than what we are going to be using it for. It could be a very similar purpose but they've collected it for their own purpose uh, but it may be useful for us. Uh, I'm now joined by my cat who is going to help with the rest of this video. So it could be uh, other researchers, it could be within our own company we could have people who have already collected other data which could be useful to us. A lot of government departments collect data uh, and often will put some of it online uh, for researchers and for people to be able to use. The ABS collects a whole host of census data. So the ABS collects a whole lot of census data. So we uh, can get a lot of information about all of Australia. A lot of this is available for free online if you go to the ABS website or for a fee you're able to get even more detailed census information uh, right down to the census collection areas which are kind of little blocks of streets within suburbs. So you can find out very detailed information. You can imagine if you were maybe making a marketing plan you needed to know what suburbs have high concentrations of families or elderly or single people or uh, particular age groups then this is the kind of data that would be very useful. So secondary data sometimes called desk research uh, because we're not actually going out and collecting the data we're using someone else's. When we're looking at our secondary data we should keep in mind the different kinds of sources we might be going to. So academic data uh, might be looking at journal articles out of databases, work that's been done by university lecturers, uh, we might find that it's very rigorous and detailed but also it may be quite theoretical. Uh, it might be a little bit older as well. Uh, if we're looking on the web uh, we need to keep in mind that web pages, pages like Wikipedia, are, um, can be edited by pretty much anyone so the reliability is not quite as high. When we look at media articles, uh, the media articles, TV, again web, radio, uh, may not have been created by someone who really knows the area so we really want to make sure that uh, we uh, know the quality of our data. So why would we want to use secondary data? So there are a few different reasons. Uh, some are in terms of what I mentioned before. The primary data may be quite expensive and time consuming for us to collect. So if we don't need to reinvent the wheel then we shouldn't. We should be looking to see whether perhaps data has already been collected on what we want to find out about. Uh, sometimes we may still collect primary data but we might use secondary data to supplement what we've found out. So we'll compare our findings of our own data collection with what other people have found. Even before that we might use secondary data to help inform our data collection. So we might use it as a way of determining how we go about sampling, maybe what kind of questions we want to ask. So secondary data has a number of uses. Uh, we always need to keep in mind the limitations of quality and relevance, uh, but it can be very useful. So our advantages and disadvantages uh, the secondary data much quicker to obtain, someone's already collected it, it's already sitting there, uh, it's 
generally inexpensive. Uh, I guess it depends who has collected the data, whether they're expecting you to pay for it. Uh, it's already there and it can most certainly enhance your primary data collection. It can help you to write a better survey, do better sampling, as well as giving you information to contrast your results against. Uh, downside, it might be a little bit old, uh, it might not perfectly match. So it could be research from overseas or it could be research uh, on a slightly different population. So we do need to keep that in mind. Here are some of the things we should consider when we are evaluating the quality of secondary data. So we can start by just checking when was the study conducted. Is what they are saying still relevant? If it's quite an old study and we're looking at say smartphones or technology or uh, some sort of current uh, product or issue, then if the data is too old it's going to be no good to us. For some other areas, maybe data that's 5, 10, 15 years old might still be relevant. So we need to keep in mind what we are studying and how that relates to the age of the secondary data. We should look at the purpose of the study. What were they trying to find out? Did they collect data with a particular purpose and how does that relate to our purpose? We should also keep in mind who collected the information. You can imagine that perhaps uh, if we're looking at information about uh, health and cigarettes, then we might put more weight in secondary data from health researchers than we might uh, from research produced by cigarette companies. So we need to keep in mind who collected the information. They may have had some sort of agenda uh, or some sort of particular thing they were trying to communicate. Uh, we should look at what was collected and also how it was collected. Was it a sample? Was it a random sample? How big was the sample size? How did they go about collecting the data? Was it a phone survey? If it was a phone survey, was a phone survey appropriate? If it was an internet survey, was that appropriate? So looking at how they collected the data uh, and whether we consider that to be giving good representative data. If we've got multiple sources of secondary data, we also want to compare them and say, see whether there are similarities and differences. If we are evaluating a particular data source and their results are different to three other different data sources, but those other three are all consistent with one another, is, is there something wrong with this one? Was it something about how they collected the data? Is there some reason why it's different? Okay, so one final note uh, when we're thinking about our secondary data. Anytime we are talking about someone else's data, we should be making sure that we reference it. In this unit, we are not writing essays, so we don't really need to worry too much about referencing. But I thought it was a good place to remind you that anytime you are referencing other people's work, whether it be websites, journal articles, uh, anything like that, you should be providing a bibliography or a references section. And there's different kinds of styles. So I've mentioned the Harvard style here. Another common one is APA. Another common one is Chicago. And the key with whatever referencing style you use is that you are consistent. So each of these is a set of rules. You're following the set of rules so that someone can look at your references and they can go and find those same resources if they want. This has been a Swinburne production. 